Stanford Doggo is a new quadruped robot that we built. We designed it to be inexpensive, open source, but also have high performance. Each of the legs are four bar linkages that are driven by a belt pulley system. He can walk, he can trot, he can do backflips. When we run Dago, there's usually two people in control. One person is usually holding the e-stop. So the e-stop is a switch that when you press it, it'll turn the robot off. So this is kind of a safety measure. And the second person is on the computer. And then they're the person giving the robots different commands. It's transmitted over a wireless link to the robot. For instance, trot at this speed, jump with this height. We carefully designed it so that it's super light um, and very power dense, so it can accomplish very dynamic tasks. It can tell when it's applying force to the ground, and also it's able to then adjust itself very quickly to changing scenarios. The compliant behavior of Stanford Doggo means that each leg is kind of acting as a virtual spring. And there's no springs in the robot though, it's all done in software. The motors of the robot are operating at 8,000 times a second where they're recomputing the forces that the legs need to apply to make sure that they're able to overcome disturbances and track the trajectories there's been a lot of trial and error. For instance, we never made a simulated model of this robot, so everything that we tried <laughs> was in real life. And it was part of the fun of the project, honestly. When we first put the full robot on the ground, it kind of looked like a toddler who really didn't know how to walk at all. But it, it was moving, it was moving, and we were really excited. The code for all the legs and for all the abilities that it has, we have online. So anyone who wanted to build Stanford Doggo could do so at a relatively small cost. We had seen these other quadruped robots used in research, but they weren't something that you could bring into your own lab and use for your own research. They were kind of isolated in the labs that they were developed in. We're basically having this fundamental system that then people can piece on to accomplish whatever tasks they're interested in. Maybe it's picking stuff by putting an arm on the robot or carrying a package. What's the next generation of this that would be more capable and more useful from what we've learned? For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.